The other day, Mark and I caught up to Darren Bush at his man cave in Madison, Wisconsin. There we sat down and asked him a few questions. Most paddlers know Darren best as the owner of Rutabaga Paddle Sports, but he's also an avid outdoorsman, a writer, devoted husband and father, and most noticeably, a very charitable and kind person. Here's a little of what we talked about that day with a few outtakes at the end. Um, I love canoe camping just because it allows you to get out uh, where you normally can't go. Um, it gives you the chance to have relationships and develop those relationships and, you know, the sort of the triangle of, you know, you, friends, and nature is, you know, it's really interesting how much you can develop a relationship over a short period of time uh, traveling with someone. Mm -hmm. I really like the, uh, the self-contained aspect of it. You can kind of take whatever you want, but it's in this little spot, this little contained thing, and you think about it, if you're out you know, on a solo trip especially, everything you need in the world is right there. And it sort of strips away all the superfluous, superfluous stuff. Superfluous. Superfluous. In the back of your mind kind of wish, uh, why, you know, can't I just go home? Uh, there's no bad weather, just the wrong clothing. You know, there's no bad bugs, just no head net. Um, Part of the reason you do this is to go outside. And uh, my, my daughter and I and, uh, were camping one time up at a campground and we went in our little tent. And, and here's these you know, 40 foot motorhomes all lined up with their satellite dishes outside, you know, and they're inside with the air conditioner on. But they're not even there. And my daughter went around and nudged some of the satellite dishes just to see what would happen. And they all came streaming out <laughs> looking for a, a way to, to get it back so they could get their 24 hours new channel, news channel. And uh, I don't see any reason to do that, no. So yeah, being outside is about being outside, uh, you know, warts and all. I don't like it when it's really hot because you can only take off so many clothes. You know, I won't wear a Speedo because that should be against the law. It's certainly against the, the certainly against good taste, but uh, <laughs> Um, but I like it when it's cold because you can always put more on. So, I mean, I've paddled, you know, below freezing and I really like it. You know, it's hard to overheat. I, I really like just being out, you know. You, you see things differently uh, when the weather's bad. You know, you're cooped up under a tarp kind of watching stuff. You start to see things. You know, you start to see the birds that are doing the same thing and you see the animals that are kind of scrambling around. And, and rain sounds cool. You know, it sounds good on a tarp. It's relaxing. There's a very spiritual component to it. It's not necessarily religious, but you know, for me it is. But, but uh, you know, you think about all the great religious traditions of the world. Nobody went inside to get inspired. You know, Moses went up the mountain, and Jesus went to the wilderness, and Muhammad went to a cave in the desert, and Buddha sat under a tree. And um, no one ever goes inside for spiritual enlightenment. They always go out. And I've had experiences where I've been out paddling. I was on a solo trip a few years ago, going down the Wisconsin River. And it was um, probably the last week in October, so it was a little bit iffy weather-wise. And it was kind of overcast, and that's kind of a bummer, but the, the colors are bright, and we're down looking at the bluffs. And I don't talk to myself when I paddle, but I sing to myself, which is, you know, that's a charitable thing to do when no one's, no one's around. You can, you can sing. And I was just kind of singing along and, you know, singing this happy little hymn, There's Sunshine in My Soul, and the clouds broke and hit that bluff and it just lit up. I thought, thanks. That was really kind. You know, thanks for the experience. So I, I feel closer to, to the divine when I'm outside, clearly. What, how do you spoil yourself on a trip? Is there something? <laughs> yeah, an eight-inch Dutch oven. Cast iron. I don't. I don't do those aluminum things. They're an abomination. Um, no, I like making bread, and they're not that heavy. You know, I mean, they're they're not light certainly, but it's, I think it's less than ten pounds. Um, other than that, just food. I mean, um, I'm not a big fan of you know macaroni and cheese with spam cut up in it, and I don't know anybody that is. Um, so I usually okay, fine, whatever. You know. Um, I try and I try and eat a little better. I try and eat fresh. You know, I try not to eat. I mean, I'm not packing in the filet mignon, but uh, you know, I don't. I, I try and eat the same stuff I would eat at home, mm -hmm. which uh, is it's just a lot better for you anyway. Something that you know, like dealing with your customers, dealing with your employees, there's something that really 
it makes it all worthwhile, all the hard work, the long hours you put in. Um, you're assuming there's a typical day. <laughs> I mean, that's the one thing about this is, uh, I mean, years ago I said to, to Jeff, my former partner, I said, is this ever going to be business as usual? He said, nope, get used to it. And uh, I'm used to it. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. Um, but you live for the little things, you know. Uh, you live for the person that, that, you know, they call downstairs and say, can you come up? A guy wants to say hi. And it's a guy that, you know, I sold the boat to 10 years ago, and he's on his way up north to paddle somewhere, and he just wants to say hey and thanks. You know, um, you know it's I actually like writing paychecks because they're going to the people that I really love. Um, I have the best staff in the world. They're fantastic. And uh, it's, I actually like signing checks. It's like, wee, there's another one. Yeah, and the janitor and everything else. I'm, <laughs> I'm answering the phone because it needs to be answered. And uh, people are surprised by that, which I find very strange. Um, that's, that's why I do this. You know, all the other stuff I do so that I can interact with people. And um, my best friends in the world, I mean, because of this industry. If you weren't the boss, what particular job at Rutabaga would you like most to have? Salesperson. Salesperson? Or teacher. Or teaching the outdoor programs. One of the two. Or both. That all of the above? Well, you know, I'm not going to do this forever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, someday I hope to be able to stop doing this and do something else. When I do, I'll probably ask the new owner if I can work for him. Um, well, that brings us right into my next question. If you weren't in the paddling business, what, what would you be involved in? Um, what would you be doing instead? Maybe a, a professional blacksmith? Probably not a professional blacksmith. Being an amateur blacksmith burns me enough. I don't think I could tolerate doing it all day. Uh, people that are new coming in for their first, buy their first canoe, and, and it must be a great feeling to be part of getting these people involved in what we consider you know, a great thing. Yep. Um, you know, I had one experience, uh, geez, it's probably 10 years ago, where a woman came in, she said, uh, she was a teacher, and she said, I really want to get a solo canoe because my husband is a computer programmer. He doesn't even like going outside. He's, he lives inside his brain. And, but we both do our thing, and he doesn't want to paddle, and I do. So we sold her a solo canoe, and uh, after that she said, you know, I need to learn how to use this thing. I said, cool, why don't you take a lesson? And she said, I really don't have time for a lesson. I looked at my watch, it was like 4 o'clock. I said, you know what, there's nothing more important than, the, than this. Let's just have a two-hour private. And we paddled around for a couple hours, and I showed her, to do, showed her how to do stuff, and she did it fine. She did it great. And we finished up, and I, I reached down to pick the boat up, and took it out of the dock, put it on the grass. I turned around, and she's standing there, and she grabs me, she hugs me, and says, thank you, you just changed my life. Well... Nice. <laughs> how do you beat that? Yeah, that's you know, hard to beat. How do you beat that? That's hard to beat. And I still see her driving around town with her boat in her car, and I honk and wave, and she honks and waves. And that's cool. um, it's that kind of stuff is that's why we do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. The industry has, has seen a surge in kayaks in the last 10, 15 years, or yep. and then uh, went to fishing kayak platform things, and then uh, now it's the stand up paddle boards. Uh, can you tell me what you see in the near future, or is it something, one of those things that if you tell us, you'd have to kill us? Nope, there's no secrets. Um, I think kayaks will continue to, to dominate, unfortunately. Um, Stand-up paddle is coming out pretty strong. I thought it was going to be a bit of a flash in the pan, but what happened is people realized that surfboards are really stupid for flat water, and we don't have a lot of waves around here. So people are designing boards that are more suitable for, you know, I'd call it day touring, you know, something they go straight without a lot of effort. I think that's going to help a lot. Um, it's fun, you know, it's a different different kind of way of, of, of exploring the water. You know, when you're, you're up on a board, you can see down, you know, without polarized lenses, you can actually see what's going on down there, and it's kind of cool. But, uh, you know, canoeing has its place, it always will. Um, I'm a little disappointed it hasn't, you know, grown as much as the other categories have. But I think it has something to do with our culture. Um, you can get in a kayak and get a shove off the dock and go and make the thing go straight. 
pretty easily. You know, you can be an intermediate in 20 minutes. Um, in a canoe, especially a solo canoe, you got to put some time into it. And putting time into something isn't something that our culture likes to do very often. We want the instant gratification of jumping in and doing it. And uh, but you know what I tell people: look, paddling a kayak is kind of like jogging. You know, paddling a solo canoe is like ballroom dancing. You know, it's really different. It's still aerobic. It's still cool, but the precision required is is much more. And it's, it's more aesthetically appealing for that reason than to me. You know, there are people who like kayaks, and I, I understand that. But, you know, if I have to paddle a boat, then it's a solo canoe. You know, when someone says, close your eyes and imagine yourself paddling, what are you in? It's like, solo canoe. That's a no-brainer. Well, that's all I have for you. That's easy. Appreciate it. Well, I'd be happy that's to do it. cool. Good job. Thanks. Yep. I didn't insult you yet. No. I think I don't love you anymore, don't you? <laughs> I'm rocking. This eyeliner, that's for her too. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's funny as I have no 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 problem buying tampons, but I can't buy makeup. <laughs> for absorbent. Yep, that's what the commercials say. <laughs> okay, how the <laughs> Tell me what you want to tell me. Say what you want to say. Oh, it's just like CNN. Yeah. They ask a question, you ignore it and talk about what you want to talk about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's, it. that's it. And we can add it too. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Oh, yeah, we, we know just where to slice it so we can make you say whatever we want you to say. <laughs> Mr. Burns, you really turned me on. <laughs> oh, boy. Remember that? That's, yeah, that's going to go on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, ignore that part, sir. <laughs>